Let's see who's here. Okay, looks like we are live. And whoever you is in the room, announce yourselves. Yeah, mics should be working. Assistant, please confirm that you can hear me okay. All right. When you are online, Barbara Melka, hello, Rock SB. Greetings, greetings, Arthur's Slims. Welcome, my friend. I'm doing well, very well. How are you? How are you on this fantastic Thursday evening? Ibrahim uh, Beck, official. Hello, mate. Welcome, welcome to the live stream. 13 people watching, four people have made themselves known. John F. Hello, mate. Greetings. Welcome. Announce yourselves, guys. There must be at least another eight of you out there right now. Abraham for you. Okay. Ibrahim, Abraham. I think the root is pretty much the same. Cheddar man. Favorite cheese. Hello, Elliot. Doing well, thanks. Micro twist. Cost of living must be cheap in Latvia. Why is that? Is it a joke? Guess that's why you chose it. Okay, that's the punchline, is it? Um, yeah, it must be, I guess. How's the weather in Riga? Actually, it's been fabulous this week. I was I actually just got back. I was in Lithuania uh, for a couple of days and it was baking hot. It was 26 degrees out there, um, which uh, is hot, especially here. Didn't expect that. So as always, I was wearing a jacket, coat, everything was super uncomfortable, but mission accomplished. We did some great filming, so hopefully we'll have some Lithuanian footage uh, very, very soon. Don't get offended. Oh, mate, mate, mate. Listen, I travel all over the world. I interact with thousands of people. I think uh, for me to get offended, it would have to be a really, really, really bad joke. So no offense taken, my friend. Um, let's see, who else is here? Ibrahim and Abraham are the same names. Correct. Thank you for enlightening all of us. Hello from Georgia, the country. Oh, very nice, very nice. Actually, I was just talking about it this evening, thinking to myself, oh, I'm going to Brussels soon again. And one of my subscribers wrote a comment saying that they're, they're Georgian living in Brussels, coincidental actually. So I think I might reach out to him and see if, uh, if he wants to meet up in Brussels. Georgian people, it never gets boring. They just know how to have a good time. So saw some pics from Varna, sunbathing already. Yep, I'm not surprised. I'm really not surprised. I mean, when was I there? I was there in February and it was 22 degrees on the beach back in February. So you can imagine what it must be like now. I mean, it's April, two months on. It's already spring. That was still winter. Let's see. Randa, good evening, my friend. Vilnas. Vil if I mispronounce anything, it's, it's because... If I can show you that the, the text on this is tiny. And I don't know if I can make it bigger. It just doesn't seem to expand. So... We'll make it happen. Um, I'm doing good. What a live stream. You're getting more professional on it with amazing equipment. Why, thank you. I'm hoping it looks the part. I'm trying to make it look 
you know, so as if people stumble on my live stream, they don't just think it's done, you know, without the proper lighting or whatnot. I, although this is cutting off my head from what I see, and I don't like that. When I sit up like that, my head's cut off, and that shouldn't be happening, and I don't want to slouch down. So if you guys bear with me just one second, that's a little technical thing I need to get resolved. So how's that doing? Let's have a look. And I noticed I've got my Christmas bottle here in the, uh, in the background. Let's give that a, a little click and give it a bit more, bit of a better vibe in here. Shit, my head's still cut off. What on earth is going on here? I'm going to have to get a lower chair. Hang on, guys. I'll just lift the camera up a tiny bit. should have gotten this all done earlier but those of you that are on the live stream already you guys know me you'll forgive all the uh the um, technical issues in the beginning let's see so, okay this is perfect now we're talking of a professional setup uh what else we got here uh randall good evening Gagdilamate. alun gibbon greetings from thames valley Good evening, mate. Dancho, dobre večer od Bulgaria. Dobre večer, kaksi. Good evening from Latvian in London. Labakar, kajet. Who else do we have in here? I have been watching your videos since I were in Uzbekistan at the moment in Latvia, Yelgava. Nice one, mate. I, so you are from Uzbekistan, living in, in Yelgava. So my question to you, mate, is if you're watching my video since Uzbekistan, you now are in Latvia, why haven't I tasted your plov yet? I mean, it's customary in, in Uzbekistan to serve plov. Um, so I'm waiting for an invite, my friend. I've just invited myself to yours for a plof. And if you're a man from Uzbekistan, I know you know how to make a good plof. What's the bottle on the side of the screen? This one? This is, it's kind of like a, it's uh Altmore whiskey. And then on this side, it's what I'm on today, a little bit of, Ararat, which is uh, my favorite cognac from Armenia. So, there we go. Absolutely love this. The smell of this is amazing. Mm. When am I returning to the wonderful country of Armenia? You know what? I've been asked that a lot lately, and I miss it. I miss it so much. Uh, I don't know if I can stay away much longer. Um, although I've got a lot, a lot planned for the summer. I really, really want to cover a lot of the Baltics. I have a lot of plans for this summer um, when it comes to filming here in the Baltics. Um, so maybe September when it starts getting gray and grim here and it's still all nice and sunny and lively in Armenia. I might do that. Uh, let's see. Hello, Justin. Nice apartment. Thank you very much, my friend. And then, boy, I'm getting blind as a bat here. Hola, muy buenas. ¿Qué tal? And then, my good greetings from Poland. Czech, 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 right? Czech is uh, high in Polish. Dzień dobry, dzień dobry. 
Jak się masz? So, guys, welcome. How many are we? 25 now? 25 in the room. Excellent. Nothing worse than speaking to an empty room. So to all the 25 of you who have decided to spend some time with me on this Thursday evening, welcome. This is to you guys. Oh, lovely. And um, yeah, what I like to do is, is generally start with what's been going on in the last week. I'm still trying to do these once a week. I know I missed last week because had a few hiccups here and there with filming and everything else. But, um, but yeah, I was in Lithuania, in Vilnius, um, two days ago. Absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely loved it. Had a fabulous time. And one thing I noticed is, you know, what I want to say is when you're a YouTuber and you step off the plane and you arrive somewhere or you step off the bus and, and you get to a new city, as a YouTuber, you then look at things completely differently. So you focus on things because you're always thinking about framing. How's it going to look? Is this a good place to start? Is this a good place to continue? And you, you pay attention to things in a much different way than, let's say, if you just arrive in a new city, all is great. You, you pay a lot more attention to, to detail. And I, I, you know, ever since I started YouTube, I find that absolutely fascinating. And uh, one thing that really stood out is how really different the Baltic countries are from one another. There's three countries, namely Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. Um, they're very different countries. I mean, in, Lith in Lithuania, the religion is actually Catholicism. It's like Polish, obviously, because of the history. But, um, you know, the vibe of the city is completely different. Um, and I'm not going to say better. I'm not going to say better. I don't like to go to a place and start saying, oh, this is better than that, or it's better back home or worse. Uh, if you want something to be the same as where you come from or where you've been, then just stay home. The whole thing is to embrace difference uh, for better or for worse. And... Um, you know, for instance, I noticed the, the Khrushchevkas, the, the, the buildings that were built during the Khrushchev era in the Soviet Union, the, there's masses of them throughout the Soviet Union. And normally, it doesn't matter where you go. I mean, I've been to Rezekne, I've been to, um, you know, places in, in Ukraine, in Russia, in, in you name it, in Latvia, in Riga. And, and you can find these neighborhoods that if someone took you there blindfolded and you know, removed your blindfold, you'd have trouble identifying where you are because they look so identical. But what I noticed is in, in Lithuania, they've converted some of these into really trendy, nice looking five story buildings that for what they are and, you know, knowing how dreadful some of them look, it's really, really impressive what they managed to do with them. Yeah, on the other hand, you know, in Latvia, you still have masses of them that nothing's been done to them and and that's got its own charm as well especially when you're walking through these neighborhoods i find it fascinating so the first thing i noticed whilst traveling this time is is the difference between the three baltic countries um especially because i spend so much time in latvia that for me it's like my second home um but the food as well the food is same, same, but different, as they like to say in Thailand, you know. Uh, for instance, I, I had myself this exquisite um, cold soup, what they call the cold soup. It was 26 degrees outside. Um, you know, it was uh, hot. Normally, you wouldn't eat a soup. But in the summer, these guys have what they call cold soup, which is basically a beetroot soup with a kefir base. And they drink it both in Lithuania and Latvia. Uh, but the origins, obviously, are Lithuanians. And I've got to say, they make it pretty damn good over there. So um, there's a reason why they invented the soup. And obviously, they take a lot of pride when they make it. And it was a phenomenal experience, too. So, yeah. So I spent there 
a couple of days and um, got a lot of footage done. Boy, did I get a lot of footage done. I uploaded the footage yesterday and it was 121 gigabytes of footage. If you can only get your head around that, that is a lot. My whole computer is about 500 gigs. So this was 121 gigs and it took eight hours to upload overnight. Um, so now I've got a backup of it. The videos are coming out for sure. I'm always stressed when I, when I make these videos. The, the one thing that I protect with my life when I'm done filming is, is the camera with the, the, the chip, chip inside. Because you lose that, you've just wasted loads of time, money, effort. And it drives me absolutely bonkers. Um, so yeah, I've got these videos coming out, so by tradition, there's already these templates that I use when I go to different countries. People are interested in, you know, uh, what the people are like, what the locals are like, what the food is like, um, what the cost of living is like. So um, we're covering all that. Um, and I've, I need to go back because there was not enough time. I need to go back because now, one of the most popular series of videos that I've started making in the last couple of weeks were these 24 hours in a city. So, you know, if I'm going to a city and I had to pick the best places and things to do and visit and experience and eat, and you only had 24 hours to do, to do it in, what would be the ultimate top picks of mine in that specific country? And I did it in, uh, in Poland and I did it in, in Riga. Yeah, go ahead. Mads Lindrup. Um, look at that. We've got a guy coming here. Hello, Jew. Do you condemn Israel's terror in Gaza? Mate, you must have about three million channels that you can go and have your kind of fun on tonight or any other night. Um, here, mate, we're here to have a relaxed evening. So do me a favor. If you want to stick around and watch and listen and have something of value to bring to the table, great. Um, if not, take a high crawl just ban you so um thanks for interrupting my uh, my flow here but uh, yeah we're big boys in this room we're not you know children so you can swiftly move on or don't waste my time so and if you keep on i'll just have to say oh well out um but yeah where was i um yeah so don't you hate it when these idiots just have nothing better to do than waste your time? Um, what did he say? Piss off, mate. Oh, okay. Ah, yeah, good on, good on you, mate. Why don't we all bombard this guy? This is not a place for politics. This is a place for relaxed fun. I really don't care if you're Polish, Hungarian, Czech, uh, Moroccan, Saudi, Israeli, uh, Swedish. To me, it, what's most important is um, whether you're a nice person. So, and if you're not, fuck off. Ooh. Uh. Uh, where was I? Damn, I lost my train of thought. I wish I could just rewind and look at it again. So yeah, the last couple of weeks I was talking about these videos that I came out with and uh, they've, they've performed outstandingly well. Uh, we had uh, some really nice views. What did we actually achieve on them? Let me take a look because that's really my, my, uh, my, 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 oh, I'm not even on my phone here because I'm using it to, uh, Bear with me a sec, guys. As I said, technology and me. What is the name of that thing? Studio. How many? Okay, so my Riga one that I did on, that I released on Sunday has uh, 4,800 views. 
And the one I did before that has 7,200 views. Now, for me, that's, that's pretty good. I mean, obviously, I could always ask and wish for more views, but I got to admit that for me, that's a, a pretty good result in the first week. Um, what's more interesting is, you know, how the momentum with the subscribers uh, are growing uh, dramatically. And that, that means a lot because I can see that after every video that I put out, um, you know, gradually, gradually, the income that comes along with these videos is, is growing as well. Um, so, yeah. I'm happy with the way things are going, um, and I'm really excited about the, the, the next few videos that are coming out in, in the short term, so stay tuned for that, guys. Now, a couple of things I wanted to discuss with you, things that I think are of interest to me and possibly anybody. Um, interesting, Wood Green yesterday, I heard there were five arrests, a group of Bulgarians from Wood Green um, got detained yesterday. Um, and apparently they managed to pull off a scam worth 52 million pounds, um, which is astronomical. I mean, that's a big scam these guys pulled off. Basically, they were um, um, claiming some kind of benefits. I'm not sure exactly. But when I, I just had it in the background because I have I had the news going on and I was, 52 million pound scam. Now, normally I wouldn't mention anything like this, but when I saw the number, I mean, it just tells you, I mean, you, you, you can't be stupid to pull off a scam like this. I mean, all right, there's nothing good about ripping people off. But when I heard the number, even though I don't condone this kind of action at all, but the magnitude of it was just so impressive. 52 million pounds. And the funny thing is, that when they got nicked, when the police arrived, most of it, I think, was still in cash in suitcases, which is the only thing that I could say, ah, oh, that wasn't very smart because they might be able to, you know, get most of it back. But, uh, but that was absolutely amazing. And the reason, the reason why I'm mentioning it is because just a couple of months ago, actually, I was looking just before I came online, it's more than a couple of months ago, it's actually 11 months ago. But time flies, and I was in Wood Green um, just about, yeah, 10, 11 months ago. And they were, you know, showing it on the news that the scam was actually happening at the back of a Bulgarian shop. And I think I went in that shop. And it's hard to believe that I was in a shop where it just looks like your average shop where they might sell sirene, kashkaval, uh, you know, some bannets and all sorts of pickles. And yet at the back, there's a couple of doors that lead into an office where there's computers and this scam was getting pulled off, which was just, yeah. When I, when I realized that I was actually in the shop, in the neighborhood and everything else, it, I just thought, yeah, crazy. Hmm. Yeah. So we're going to jump into yeah, yeah, go on. We're jumping into questions now, so let's see. So Cheddar Man would like to know how many languages I speak and which ones. See, that's something that I don't usually share with people uh, on the channel because I want to give you guys a reason to come back and keep getting tuned in again and discover it maybe one by one. Um, you know, I try and use them as frequently as I can. Um, but the thing is, I'm constantly learning languages. Right now I'm learning uh, Latvian, which is not necessarily challenging, but it's taking more time than I expected. And the reason is because I'm not immersed here the way I would ideally would like to be, because I can get away with English and I can get away with Russian. And I really have to force myself to walk into a place and communicate, order, interact uh, in the local language when it's so easy to do it to do without it. But um, yeah, so however many it is, it's always going to be one more because when I've got this one down, I'll be learning my next one and my next one. And maybe when I retire the 
channel one day, I'll come clean and say exactly how many languages I speak, which ones they are. Um, but bear in mind, guys, that when I say I speak a language, that's being able to freely communicate, which means understand jokes, argue with people, win an argument. Uh, on top of the ones that I speak, I can also communicate in quite a few languages above that. So languages has always been my passion. It's something I find fascinating. It lets you, you know, get closer to different cultures and... Um, and yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely love it. So stay tuned and yeah, we'll see exactly how many languages I speak when I retire the channel. But for now, that's not a, that's not, you know, in insight. So what else? Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you. Someone just said that they like the 24 hour video in Riga. Yeah, I'm really trying my best now to to not just create uh, the type of videos I was doing before, although I thought they were great, but I am trying to step up the game with showing people more of my surroundings in a in a more professional, uh, pleasing way, if you like, than just holding the camera and having my face in it all the time. So yeah, I'm just trying a few new things with with uh, with the camera. I've learned a lot. Um, so I am working hard on that and I'm happy that you like it because it means a lot when you're trying something new, you want to get the feedback, you want to see what people are thinking and saying. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, okay, so um, let's keep going. We're not getting political here. Thank you. I'll look forward to eat um, your plof very nicely. And by the way, Eid Mubarak to you, my friend. But do me a favor, your political comments. I never speak politics on the channel. I never speak politics on my videos. When war broke out between Russia and, uh, and Ukraine, you can imagine I got bombarded with questions and, you know, opinions. And all I had to say was that I'm old enough right now to realize that I can give you a true definite answer in 20 years when I'm really given the full picture. I'm given all the facts because anybody my age will remember certain things in living history that you realize that maybe the media, maybe uh, the governments, maybe everything is not being so upfront with us. And yeah, so like I said, I appreciate the invite for the plof, but do me a favor, my friend. Um, let's keep the stirring, you know, comments that could stir up uh, opinions and everything else. This is not a place for that. So Aid Mubarak, my friend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the cold soup is, is, is found everywhere. Who, who commented that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like I said, you know, you, there, there are different countries that have the soup, the, the cold soup. It's very, very common. Um, but I think the original ones, the ones that thought it up to mix beetroot and eggs and onions and, you know, all sorts of other things into a yogurt were the Lithuanians. And I'm sure it never happened by a master chef in a kitchen. It was probably a drunk guy woke up in the morning, super hungry. Mm -hmm hungover, not much food left, decided to throw whatever he had left into a bowl, had it, 
and it just turned out perfect. So, yeah, that that sounds like a, <laughs> you know, the uh, reasonable way to imagine that this this came about. And my assistant is laughing her head off in the background here. That's why I'm getting a bit of a, a delay in the question. Yeah, yeah, I realize. So, Stephen, traveling to Latvia for the first time in August 21 from Canada. Man, all those statements already making me jealous you're 21 you're traveling here for the first time so you're going to get to experience all these amazing things you know with new eyes um all i can say is fantastic are you traveling alone or you're traveling in a group if you're a solo traveler make yourself known because uh especially a young solo traveler i'm currently um you know recording for my podcast which is basically interviewing solo travelers um but I want to have a series of them before I actually launch the podcast onto all the different platforms because um, I don't want to have a gap which gives me kind of a cushion to record them. But if you're traveling solo, let me know. Or if you're not, even if it's in a group, drop me a message when you're here. I always love to meet my uh, my subscribers. And um, I mean, immerse yourself. All I can say, mate, is if you're going to come here for the first time, don't bring your bubble here with you immerse yourself be courageous go to the market first day understand how the culture works get a feel for what the people are like and then try as much as you can to to um to experience the latvia it's a fantastic country fantastic people um and i think you're gonna have a fantastic time but definitely drop me a line on telegram or instagram one of the two and then we can open a line of communication directly because oftentimes when people message me on on uh, on YouTube, what happens, I see the first message, then I'll respond. And then the second message, if they get responded after that, it's sometimes so easy to miss that I'd rather have open communications on Telegram or Instagram. So, it's, you know, I, I don't miss the messages. So, yeah. Okay, so who was this? Okay, Matthew. So the lineup for my next few videos, uh, I just got back from uh, Lithuania and see me that you like the markets. I, I did a film on the market there, a really impressive market, really interesting place actually. It was built in 1906 and it's called the Halles, Halles Turgus. Um, that's the name of the market. Now, back in 1906, when they started this market, they had to implement a rule really early on to prevent the, uh, the ladies selling there from gossiping uh, with each other. That was an official rule, apparently. And, uh, and I found that funny, that the situation was so bad that they actually had to implement a rule. But honestly speaking, what kind of a market in Eastern Europe or former Soviet Union would it be without the gossiping babushkas? I mean, they're just, you know, they're part of the, uh, the furniture already in these markets. So, yeah, I thought it was a funny rule, but God bless the old babushkas that gossip. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change them for the world. And as for the night videos, I didn't do one in, in Lithuania, although I will be for sure. I wasn't there on the weekend and, um, you know, the weekends are the best nights to really feature going out. But I have been out many, many, many times in Lithuania and I tell you, it's a blast. So stay tuned. They'll be coming very soon. Stay tuned for a great night out in, in Vilnius and maybe Kaunas as well. I want to do a few cities because unlike, unlike Latvia where, you know, uh, the population in Latvia and let's say Lithuania is, is quite there's a big difference. I mean, even though they both have tiny populations, 1.8 million and 2.8 million, 
Um, when the countries are so small, you really feel that difference, So, which means that they have more cities that are populated quite substantially that have kind of like a, a city vibe. Um, so there's a few places in Lithuania that I want to check out and share with you guys and do the nightlife in, in each and every one of those because I think it'll be a lot of fun. All right, who's this? Radar, you're coming to, to Riga in 18 days. Let me check. Today's the 18th. That does the 29th. Um, today's the 11th, yeah. So 18 days, that's the 29th. How long are you here for, mate? Because I'm back. I'll be traveling. I'm back in Riga on the 30th, I believe. The 30th, yeah. 30th or the 1st. So uh, definitely message me on on instagram on uh, telegram and um yeah if you're in the mood and you know it tickles your fancy just uh, message me and we can meet up and get to know another subscriber so far i've had fantastic experiences meeting meeting you guys Ah, from Finland, Mitakulu, Mitakulu. So we have someone from Finland who's enjoying the videos. And yeah, I'm waiting for the beers, man. Come over, let's have some beers and have some good times. Meanwhile, I'm sip sipping this amazing Armenian cognac. It's the Ararat Five Year, which for an everyday cognac, it's absolutely the bomb. It smells great. Ah, he all right, misunderstanding if you just like to sit home and watch your vi the videos with the beers. Again, thanks for the support. I appreciate all of you that, you know, take your time to watch the videos. Any planned trips to former Yugoslavia? Absolutely. I don't know when yet. I don't know when yet, but... Um, Definitely planning on, on showcasing um, Serbia, um, Slovenia, Croatia. Um, you know, definitely going to go also to countries like Albania. I think it's going to be fascinating. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's many, many countries that I still need to add to the YouTube um, list of countries to go to. But um, bear with me. Keep watching. And uh, hopefully we'll get to a country of your choice very, very soon. So what do I have planned for the summer? I've got big plans for this summer. Um, now, I had big plans for the summer last year. And unfortunately, they didn't come to fruition. But I'm basically bringing last year's plan to this year. So one thing people don't realize is that the Baltic states have the most amazing, pristine, gorgeous beaches ever. And I mean that. The sand is just like white talcum powder. They're interesting in the winter too, by the way. They freeze over. The sea freezes over. That's a different topic. Right now we're coming up to the summer. And... What I wanted to do last year is take Joy, my Lada, 1989-2106, Shistjorka, and make my way up to the top of the Baltics, as long as my hand in frame, up to the top of the Baltics, and then do the coast and stop in all the major beach resorts and film there, kind of like I did in Golden Sands last year, but do a Baltic version. And uh, yeah, interact with the locals, see what they're like, and introduce you guys to the beaches of the Baltics, which are phenomenal. And they cost a fraction of, you know, most typical beach destinations that you could imagine. Um, although I'm not sure anymore. I was reading uh, an article today about Tesco, the retailer, and 
their profit margins. And that's a completely different discussion for another time. But, um, but yeah, what I'm noticing more and more is that the, the gap, the price gap between the cost of living in Eastern Europe and the former Soviet countries, let's say, and Western Europe is narrowing. I mean, it's getting balanced. Unfortunately, the salaries are still out of whack dramatically. Uh, so I don't know why they're doing this and, and how they can sustain it without, you know, serious problems in the short term. But uh, yeah, travel the Baltics, the beaches, and just stop in all the resorts and introduce you to the beaches of Estonia and uh, maybe meet some lovely young Estonian young, young ladies and show you how beautiful they are and then make our way down into Latvia. And obviously everybody knows Jurmala for obvious reasons. It was the, the Riviera of the Soviet Union. It was Europe's balcony, the, the European balcony from the Soviet Union, you know. Uh, but then again, you go down into places like uh, Klaipeda and so on in, 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 uh, in Lithuania. And then hopefully, if we still have time, make our way into the Polish side which is not a Baltic state, but it's on the Baltic Sea, and go through Gdansk, Sopot, uh, Gdynia, all these areas. So that's what I'd like to get done during, um, during this summer. It was my plan for last year. It didn't work out, so I'm hoping that this year will. All right, guys, what's going on here? I've got 42 people watching me right now and very few likes. So I'm going to ask you all to do me a favor, hit that like button. So as YouTube says, oh, by the way, there's some action going on here. Let's, let's introduce it to other people that might want to listen to, um, to this chat tonight. So let's see. I want to see these numbers go up. What are we at? 25 now. We were at 24. That's only one of you that's hit the like button. Whoever's not doing it, announce yourselves. Yeah. So am I? Am I? Am I going to visit? Uh, I think it's said Wroclaw in uh, in Poland. Uh, absolutely, Poland is a vast country. It's massive with a huge population. Light count up to 32. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you very much. That all helps. Um, listen, there's so many places in Poland that I really would like to explore, share with you guys, um, you know, from the, the western side all the way through to places like Bialystok, which are not your common tourist destination, but I just find them fascinating Eastern European cities. And uh, sorry to any Poles, I know it's not nice to call Poland Eastern Europe, but let's face it, Bialystok just does look very Eastern Europe, European. So, um, yeah, definitely going to explore a lot more of Poland. We're going to zigzag Poland soon. Oh, someone just asked, do I miss Banitza? You have no clue how much I miss Banitza and Sirene and Kashkavalpane and Shopska salad and the works. I mean, one thing about the, the Bulgarian cuisine is just so up my street. Let's put it this way. It's up my street. Uh, when they cook a meat, they cook it perfectly. Uh, they have a lot of salads, a lot of greens, which I absolutely love, and uh, cheeses. They take so much pride. I mean, if you go to a shop where they sell sirene, which is usually the main ingredient that goes into a banitza, so you've got the pastry, which is not exactly phyllo, not exactly puff pastry, I would say something in between. I mean, it's layered, but um, the main ingredient inside is sirene, but if you go to a proper cheese shop in Bulgaria, Sirene is not just, you have like miles of 
different seedlings from different price ranges made from cow's milk, from sheep's milk, from goat's milk. And it's just amazing to just sit there and taste it all. So, mate, I haven't had dinner yet, and you're talking to me about banitsa, one of my favorite foods there is. How am I going to stay on this, this live stream for another hour or so um, now that you've triggered those thoughts? So I might order a banitsa now and eat it with you guys while I'm, while I'm live streaming. What's the name? Travel Bookworm. Um, yes, I mean, you're welcome. I'm happy you're enjoying the, the videos. Uh, we met a couple of weeks ago. Refresh my memory. Which market was it? Agenskans or the central market? Um, but, uh, you know, I, I, you can imagine with the minute I pull out the camera, I got a lot of people that are interested in what I'm doing. A lot of people that recognize me, want to talk to me. Um, so remind me who you are, uh, two weeks ago in the market, interesting. Now I'm intrigued. So just, just type me a little bit more. So as I know exactly where, what, which market, what we spoke about, and then if I wasn't drunk, I might remind, rem remember you. So, name please. Julie. Oh, Joey, 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 you're coming to Riga and Tallinn in June. Um, listen, mate, you're going to have a good time. Be sure to, uh, you know, drop me a message when you come here. Um, I guess if you're traveling Tallinn to Riga or the other way around, I don't know if you're flying or you're taking the bus, one thing I do want to say is that recently I've started a cooperation where I've negotiated a discount for subscribers of the channel of 30% on the Lux Express, which to me is the best service for traveling within the Baltics. I mean, the, the, the buses are super comfortable. It's got nothing to do with like this Flix bus or whatever. Um, super comfortable, your own TV. Uh, free coffee all the way along there and and if you if you so choose you can even upgrade to the back of the bus where they got these like vip lounge seats and whatnot it's it's top notch um and the bathroom is super clean as well you're going to be there for four hours the bathroom is super clean but it makes sense to take the the the, the bus personally because first of all you see the scenery and it's about a four hour ride, whether if you're in Riga and you're going to Tallinn or you're going to Vilnius, it's about equidistance, it's about four hour, four hour drive. And if you really think about it, even though it's a very short flight, you are in the center of Riga, you need to make your way to the airport, 20 minute drive, but you're gonna give yourself 30 minutes anyways, right? So you've got 30 minute drive to the airport. They say you should be at the airport an hour, two hours before I'm never there less than an hour and a half before. So let's say an hour and a half. So that's already two hours. Then you actually take off. You're in the air for half an hour to an hour. That's already three hours. By the time you collect your stuff, come out the terminal, that's three and a half hours. And then you're not in the center of town. You then have to grab a cab from the airport into the center of town. Now in Vilnius, that's very close. So in Tallinn, I mean, they're, pretty, they're almost in the center of town, but they're, they're st it's still not, you still need a cab. So it's the same time to travel, but, you know, although I love to fly and I love to see the skies and everything else, but when traveling through the Baltics, it's really nice to see all the forests and everything along the way. So, um, yeah, welcome to the Baltics. Make sure you drop me a message when you're here. And... Uh, if you want to take advantage of that uh, promo, the when you book it, so you put your date, or your destination, then your date, and then there's another box here where you just put Lux L U X J E E three zero L U X J E E three zero, and that'll give you a thirty percent discount on LuxExpress.eu is the um, 
the actual address of the, uh, the website. Mm -hmm. Okay, so someone called KL just said that they're coming back to live in Latvia after a long while. First of all, I want to say, fantastic, mate. I mean, this is a country that needs its population back. It needs an increase. It needs a boost. So I really appreciate that because you come from a phenomenal country. Um, as for the places and so on, I'm sure, I don't know how long you're away, but it's very dynamic, this place. But the moonshine is great. I'm sure you're going to love it. Message me when you're here. Um, and maybe we can have a moonshine or two together in the market with some nice um, typical Latvian smoked fish on black bread. It's one of my favorite things to do in Latvia is go to the market, have these fish on black bread with the moonshine. It's, it's an absolutely amazing experience. In my last video, actually, I, did, I was fortunate enough to share that experience with a young lady um, who insisted on speaking to me in every which language there is, couldn't communicate properly with me in any of them. Uh, it was like watching a pantomime. She was telling me what, what instruments she played and everything else. Funny lady, a lot of fun. But what I loved even more than my interaction with this lady is the comments people had under the video about my interaction with this lady. It, it just creased me up. I was laughing for ages. So keep the comments coming, guys. I read all of them. I can't always find the time to respond to them immediately or right away. But no one thing. If you write a comment, I'm reading it. So, yeah, that was an amazing, uh, amazing encounter. So if you're in Riga, let me know and let's go and have some uh, some Samagon and uh, Silotka together. Uh, so someone's asking if I've ever been to Starogorod in Riga. Um, funnily enough, you should ask that because I walked past it just the other day. I was invited to the opening of a new bar uh, in Riga. And um, I decided to make some, some recordings, which I'm not going to use for, for the regular channel. It's more for promoting my upcoming trip, which I'm going to be organizing where I want to get four or five guys like-minded guys that would like to experience um, Riga. I'm going to do one in Riga, one in Bulgaria, one in Armenia, and I'm thinking one in Poland as well, where we spend three, four days together. We have a great time. Everything's taken care of, so everything is turnkey. And you guys travel with me because there's quite a lot of demand for that. And, uh, yeah, so I was getting some footage, getting ready to do kind of like a, a bit of a promotional video for this thing. And um, I passed the one in the old town because I know there's one as well just over the bridge uh, going from, I think, it's not the library bridge. It's not the, the stone bridge. It's the other one. Um, and there is one there. But I remember in 2010 or 2008, maybe, I can't remember exactly, uh, as you know, Starogorod is, is actually a, a Ukrainian uh, chain of bars. And I was in one in Kharkov. The vibe was completely different. Um, and I'm sure today the vibe in Kharkov is even more different with what's going on there. But um, I was in the one in Kharkov and it was just a phenomenal experience. So, yeah, I'm a fan. Um, even though that the main place is for beers and I'll generally do maybe a beer and then I'll switch to either cognac or vodka or, you know, moonshine, uh, gin tonics. But uh, yeah, the vibe there in those, in those kind of places I really like. So yeah, absolutely.
Okay, Ivo, thank you so much. He likes my videos and is wishing me the best of health. Um, honestly speaking, nothing more important than good health. So, got to stay healthy to keep this channel going. And that's my aim for the next uh, few years. So, we have a lot to cover, a lot of Eastern Europe left to do. And when we're done with that, we'll move on to other places, Asia, uh, Africa. So, got big plans but not until Eastern Europe is zigzagged in and out. Yeah. Is he solo traveling? Oh, okay, cool. So, what's his name? All right, Stephen. Great news. So, you're solo traveling. You're going to have a fantastic time. Uh, definitely message me privately before you, you head out, and I'll give you all the tips where to go, what to do, also what not to do, maybe you know, give you some video tips on, on what to watch as well, because I give good suggestions in the videos. But I'm also happy to, to hear that, you know, the channel, the videos that I'm putting out here are inspiring you to, to go out there and travel and, and experience the world. You won't regret it, especially at your age. You, can, you should be getting as many experiences as you can at your age. It's absolutely a must. It's absolutely um, amazing that you're doing this, mate. Yes, yes, yes. I definitely remember you from Agens Karls Market now. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I do, I do. Yeah, because you, you moved here like a couple of years ago, maybe. I can't remember exactly when you moved here, but um, yeah. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you for watching. And I'm really happy that the videos helped you guys out when you were thinking of moving here and gave you a good insight as to what it was going to be like here. So... Um, really appreciate that. For me, that's like the, the top, uh, if you like, the, the top um, comment I could get, if you like. When, when the locals say, we love your video about the country you made, the country we're from, that says a lot. And when people say, you know what, before I moved here, I needed some, some information and I watched your videos and they were really helpful. Uh, because I really try and show the authentic side of things and I try and avoid all the crap that a lot of YouTubers out there try and, you know, show, show all the, 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 the darker side, the nastier side. Um, but I just try and keep it as real as I can and, and focus on the good stuff. I guess that must be just my character in general um, because it's so much easier to find everything that's wrong with any place or anybody uh, but it really takes an effort to to identify the good stuff in, in people and places. So um, thank you so much for that. Really appreciate it. Okay, so John's asking, Latvian beer or Lithuanian beer, who wins? Let's see, how many Latvians in the room today? <laughs> I know you can't answer this without, listen, for me, my favorite beer, not just Latvian, Lithuanian, um, is um, one called Valmera Muija. It's an absolute phenomenal beer. It's, it's really smooth, really nice. It's a lager. I mean, they make all sorts, but they're the typical one. And for me, that's my number one. However, um, a subscriber of mine and I came up with an idea to make a series of videos whereby we travel to all the towns in Latvia 
that have or had breweries where they have beers that are named after the city or that are linked to the city and travel to those cities and have a beer and then do a comparison and do a series of videos about that. And we might do Lithuania too. Why the hell not? So um, we'd plan to do it uh, in February. But I just think maybe the summer will be better for something like that. You know, hot day, nice weather, all the patios, all the terraces will be open. So it'll be a good time to sit around and, and have a beer. So stay tuned for that. You might find it interesting. Okay, someone just asked my, Aaron just asked, will I ever do a group travel with subscribers? It's in the works right now. I'm working on the, on the schedule, the itinerary, you know, everything we're going to do. And I'm working on, a, on several trips. It's going to start off in Latvia. There'll be one trip to Latvia, one trip to Poland, probably. I think I'm, I'm convinced already. I'll just say it. One trip to Latvia, one trip to Poland, one trip to Bulgaria, and one trip to Armenia. I hope to get it done this year, this season. Still got a lot of work to do to get it all done and ready. Uh, but it's going to be very limited. It's not a bus of 30 people. It's going to be, you know, four, maximum five guys traveling with me, experiencing these countries, the just in Eastern European, the just in Eastern Europe way, um, showing you all the best places that I've discovered over time, uh, interacting with the locals the way I do, but integrating my people with it. So I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun. So stay tuned for that there will be a release very soon on youtube i think i'll make a video just about that and um yeah it's coming up so if you're interested aaron either drop me any uh, a message on um telegram instagram uh justin at justineasterneurope.com you can do that and i'll send you the information as soon as it's it's out there but absolutely it's happening this summer so at first i was thinking maybe to do the the amazing summer solstice festival here in latvia um because it's an amazing holiday uh, there's one drawback to that that during that time the whole of riga just empties it's like a ghost town and everybody's with their relatives in the countryside which is good for one day to head out to the countryside and experience it um but after that you know, Riga's dead, not much to do. So I'm still trying to figure out what are going to be the best dates for that. But um, definitely stay tuned. There'll be plenty more information coming out on that soon. Oh. <laughs> All right, mate. Well, listen, the, 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 the person who actually asked me about the beer is the subscriber who we're planning this trip together. Um, we were supposed to get it done. Yeah, we were supposed to get it done in um, February. Didn't work out. Then we were thinking maybe March, April. Uh, but, mate, it's still going to happen, so... I'll be recording, you'll be typing, I think it'll do some tremendous blog footage for you as well. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So message me later on Telegram. We have an open line of communication with John on Telegram. So message me later and we'll, we'll try and coordinate the best time to do that if you're still up for it, mate. Any tips, so Cheddar Man's asking, any tips for someone um, looking to start a travel channel? There are a few tips I'm going to share with you now because I've been doing this now for over two years. I think I've learned a lot and uh, I spent a lot of time researching before I started. So, so if you're thinking of uh, starting a travel channel, and you're at that stage right now where you're doing a lot of research and you're watching different videos, the best thing I can tell you, mate, is 
go register the name of your channel on YouTube. So you've got a Gmail. If you're speaking to me here, start the channel, uh, grab whatever camera you've got, whether it's your phone. Um, I found that for the best filming, um, because when you're traveling, you don't, you don't want to carry huge cameras like the Casey Neistat, uh, you know, kind of like five kilo, 10 kilo camera equipment. It just not, it's not realistic. Um, I found that the best camera you could get after your phone, you know, and if your phone's what you've got, just use that at night. I film with my phone is the Sony FDR X 3000 which is an amazing small camera. It's just this big. Yeah, I've got it right here. I'll show you. So this is the camera. See that? It's tiny. Now what's good about this camera is that in there, there is a lens and it's actually floating. The lens inside is floating. So when I'm walking, you don't have all this bouncing. Now, a lot of cameras compensate digitally for that. So like the GoPros and all that, they, they'll crop the image and they'll fix that, but at a cost. So this is a, a opti optical, if you like, floating lens. So on the inside, it's, you, know, you, you do this and it's gonna try and level off. Another thing, it's tiny. So, and then get yourself one of these, which is a little stick that the camera sits on. Now you're seeing behind the scenes footage, guys. And this is, this is your whole vlogging life. So one minute, I'm vlogging. Greetings to all my friends from here in Riga. Next minute, goes in my inside pocket and I'm just your average guy, your average tourist, which is phenomenal. So if you want, text me later. I'll give you all the specs about this camera. It's the bomb. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you what, I've always got even a spare. I like this camera so much that I've got a spare and I'll tell you why I've got a spare is because they don't make this camera anymore. They stopped making this about four years ago and they're hard to come by. You can't buy them new, so you can only get them second hand. But I've got a spare just in case that one, you know, goes up the spout. I can still keep the same quality. It's 4K, so the quality is ideal for YouTube. It's brilliant. Next thing I want to say is don't spend six months like I did thinking that you're going to learn everything you need to know about YouTube, watching YouTube. Get that camera, pull it out, make one shit video, make two shit videos, make 10 shit videos and put them out there. And you're going to learn as you go, because I wasted so much time uh, thinking that I needed more in order to be able to get ready that uh, that right now I'm kicking myself because had I started six months earlier, I know that the results would have been that much better by now, especially because it was right on the cusp of COVID and I was sat home watching videos on how to make videos whilst the whole planet was sat at home watching videos and I kind of launched my channel right when COVID started to end and people started getting their lives back. And I missed out a lot. So the sooner you get started, the better. Um, and if you sound like shit, if you look like shit on camera, uh, don't worry about it. Be genuine. Be yourself. 100%. Don't pretend. Don't... Uh, grab your camera and do the typical like, what's up YouTube and all this shit because you're not gonna sustain that. People are going to relate to who you are as an individual and that's the kind of people you want following you. So don't be fake, don't be your typical, you know, intro like the way everybody else does it. Find your way of doing it 
that feels good, that feels comfortable, and just do it that way. Because if you're gonna wake up in the morning and switch on a camera and pretend to be someone else, you're not gonna be able to sustain that. You're gonna hate your life. See, the cool thing with me is that when I am on YouTube, the only difference between how I travel is the camera. The interactions, the things I do, the people I speak to, the way I eat, everything else is exactly what I would do without a camera. The only difference is that I've got a camera in my face when I'm doing it. And when you stay genuine like that, um, it's the only way to really sustain it because nobody likes being someone else or, you know, you want to be genuine. And another thing I want to say that's very, very important is... You're not in a race. Don't compare your progress in YouTube or lack of uh, to other channels. You know, I know that if I was 25 years younger, had a full head of hair, I'd probably have three times the count of subscribers that I have right now. But the truth is, that's not where I'm at. And that's fine. I'm cool with that. Because so long as I keep getting one more subscriber, I'm that much closer to where I want to go. Now, some people can do their goal in three months. Some people, it takes three years. Some people, five years. If you're serious about doing this, then hop on the journey, but do it the right way. You know, understand that this is not something that you're going to make three videos and your channel is going to explode. It might, and if it does, I wish you all the best and, and, and it would be fantastic. But for me personally, for my channel, I would not want to release a video tomorrow that suddenly got me 3 million views, 50,000 subscribers on the back of those views because it was a video that was out of character or something unusual happened that I wouldn't be able to, to deliver and reproduce for my subscribers. So I'd much rather have a really slow, steady pace of growth where people are joining the channel because they like who I am, what I'm doing, the way I do it, and tomorrow I'm in, to, to, today I'm in Latvia, tomorrow I'm in, in Poland. But two years from now, I might be in Thailand. And what they're watching is not so much where I am, but, you know, they're watching who I am in that specific country. So, yeah, definitely. I, you know, I've, I've been through two and a half years of this now. So drop me a message later if you're serious about this. But all I can say to you, if, you, if you've got that burning desire to do it, just do it. Start. Start now. Send me your first video. And um, don't, don't worry about it if it's crap. It's going to be crap. You can't change that. And the only way you're going to get better is by doing this again and again and again. And realize that it doesn't matter who you are, what you're talking about, what your character is. There are 3 billion people watching YouTube each and every month. 3 billion. That's 3,000 million. I promise you, no matter what you choose to talk about, what your character is like, what your temperament is like, there are 100,000 people out there that are interested in you. It's such a fraction, a minute fraction of what's, what's out there. So um, the question is, how long is it going to take you to find that 100,000? Is it one year? Is it five years? Is it eight years? Is it three months? That shouldn't be the important thing here. Just believe that they're out there and... Set on your journey and definitely would love to know how your journey unfolds. So enjoy your journey, mate. That was a bit long winded. I'm sorry, guys. But that, that, when I see someone who aspires to do something and I can help them out, why the hell not? Someone just left Oregon. What's their name? Yesip wants to have a meetup. Just left Oregon. Jessip. Jessip? Jessip. I'm not. Okay. Jessip um, just left Oregon. We can have a meetup. I'm finishing my live stream now in about um, 20, 30 minutes. And then um, I have a plan to possibly meet another friend. So if you want to grab a drink. By all means, if you mean another day, 
by all means, just let me know. Drop me a line on, uh, on Telegram or uh, Instagram if you use that stuff. If not, drop me an email from your phone, Justin at Justin Eastern Europe. And um, yeah, I'm always up for meeting subscribers to you guys. When am I visiting Armenia? Guys, I really, really miss Armenia. You have no idea. I want my Lama Jo, I want my Lula Kebab. I want the feeling of being in Yerevan, in, you know, in Armenia in general, and, and the people and the warmth and the camaraderie and sitting down and all that, you know, really relaxed vibe. Ah, guys, I will be there this year. I don't know if it's going to be in September. I don't know if it's going to be before that, although I've got a lot of plans. But I think September, just when things are getting, you know, the, the, the summers are very short here in the Baltics, end of August, it's already looking like shit. Um, so September could be a good time to say, you know what, I missed the summer. Two weeks ago it was sunny, now it's looking grey. I might hop on a plane to Armenia and, you know, get that kick again. So, yeah, maybe September. And someone's saying here, I suggest DJI Osmo Pocket 3. Um, I've watched a lot of videos about the Osmo Pocket 3. It looks fantastic. It's got a huge sensor. It would resolve a lot of issues for me. I've never used it. I've looked at the Osmo Pocket, the Osmo Pocket 2. Um, and it's got that, just like this one, that's got the internal uh, gimbal, if you like. That's got an even better gimbal. Um, but yeah, I just like this because of it's really just like run and gun pull it out with your small pocket with me i just feel like i'm gonna break one every single week you know with the gimbal head and everything else fantastic looking camera i'm just so afraid such an expensive camera and then one day it's just gonna switch on and the head's just gonna be stuck or something which yeah Have I been to Rosengrel's medieval restaurant in Old Town? Who's asking this? Yanis, um, I'm not sure what it's called. If it's the one near the Sherlock Holmes Street where you go down the stairs and then there's like this alleyway and then there's like, it's the, the, the restaurant is like kind of split in two. You go down there and you go down there um, I've been there. I haven't eaten there yet. I went there just to meet a friend a couple of years ago and then and then um, But I've never had an opportunity to eat there if that's the one you're talking about It's the only one that I can think of as a as a medieval uh, Restaurant that I know of in Riga it Looks fascinating. Have you been there? Would you recommend should I go and make a video there? Um, let me know. Or do you want to just meet there and we'll make a video together? It's up to you. One or five moonshines? My kind of guy. Let's do it. Oh, that is so nice. Who was that? Mr. A. Mr. or Mrs. A. I'm not sure. But you're the guy I show to people to show what Latvia is all about. That is such a big compliment because I find it a privilege to be able to, to be here, spend so much time here. Uh, it's a phenomenal country. And if I kind of like summarize the country and the way things are here for you, uh, means a lot to me. I really, really appreciate it. So, thank you. Cheddarman, like I said, um, you're welcome for the tips, but 
make it happen. Send me your first video. You don't even have to put it online yet. Just send it to me and um, I'll be more than happy to, to give you some tips from, you know, how to film, how to do it. Um, I have quite a bit of experience with that by now, so by all means. Armenia is waiting for me, and I, I can't wait to be in Armenia, so I'll be there soon, my friend. Um, I absolutely love Armenia. Armenia has treated me phenomenally. And the funny thing is, the last time I went to Armenia, I'll tell you a little story. We're, we're in story mode now. So um, I didn't realize what an impact my videos had in Armenia until the last time I went to Armenia. So I decided to go on a bit of an adventure. I wasn't just going to fly into Yerevan via Vienna. You know, I got to do things my own way. So I saw there was a flight from Riga to Kutaisi. Kutaisi is a small town in Georgia, which is a bordering country with Armenia. So I said, you know what? I was traveling with my son, David, and I said, I'll go from, from Riga to Kutaisi, Kutaisi to Tbilisi, Tbilisi to Yerevan, spend some days there, and then fly back. And it was probably one of my favorite trips. Not only was it an amazing trip in and of itself, but I got to experience it with my son, which made it even more special. And the thing is, by the time I made it, so we landed in Kutaisi, we made our way to the train station, we sat around, there's a video about the whole journey actually. We sat around, then I got on the train to Tbilisi, then finally got on a little one of these buses micro buses or or mini buses to to Yerevan worst drive of my life and at the time I remember my son saying to me this is nauseating it's horrible and our heads were just you know the guy was a madman and we're driving through the mountains the head is just flying well you couldn't just doze off and not I mean you'd just be woken up by all the you know the turns and the, the twists and everything else and I said to him, listen, mate, yeah, it's horrible now, but one day we'll laugh about this and we might as well start laughing now. And now, till today, when we talk about this trip, the first thing we discuss is that bus ride through the Caucasus Mountains. It was absolutely ridiculous. And um, so I get, to, I get to Yerevan and I check into my hotel I've never, I've never said this story live, so this will be interesting. So I've checked into my hotel, and it's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and I'm exhausted. I couldn't sleep on, the, tr on the, the bus. So I go straight to my room, and we fall asleep. So it's now about 10 o'clock at night. I wake up, or even later. It must have been about 11.30. And I wake up. I've now slept for about four or five hours, even more, six hours in the room. And I make my way down to the lobby because I'm hungry. I said to Dave, I said, are you hungry? He goes, yeah. I said, all right, you know what? I'll make my way to the supermarket. Everything's closed by now. And I'll get some provisions. So I go down to the, the lobby trying to find some information on what we could get to eat. Worst case scenario, just find an open supermarket. So I'm speaking to the guy at the reception. And he goes to me, are you from Bulgaria? I'm like, no. He says, oh, your company is from Bulgaria. I said, yeah, I've got a company from Bulgaria, so make the invoice to my company, but I'm, I'm from England. He goes, I know you from TikTok. I said, no, I don't have a TikTok channel. You mean YouTube? He goes, no, 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 TikTok, TikTok. He said, I saw a video of you um, walking around the streets of Yerevan asking people if they spoke English. I said, yes, but... I did it for YouTube, not for TikTok. No, he says, no, it's TikTok. So it turns out some guy has ripped off my videos and I guess shrank them down and put them on TikTok. So now I was intrigued. I was trying to find them, couldn't find them. But anyways, good luck to the guy. So I say, all right, fair enough. No problem. I leave the hotel and it's now midnight. It's pitch black. I make my way to a supermarket round the corner called SAS, SAS, 
right on uh, Tumanian Street. Any Armenian watching will know exactly which one I'm talking about. And I go into the supermarket and I'm looking at the cheeses because one thing I absolutely love is the Armenian lavash, which is a very thin bread with brinza, which is very similar to the Bulgarian cheese, a bit different, but the same concept, the same idea, and greens. I love this sandwich. It's basically a rolled up wrap with cheese and any greens you can find, whether it's dill, whether it's coriander, parsley, uh, tarragon, whatever you can get your hands on. And the cool thing is they sell the bread, they sell the cheese, and they sell this mix of greens. And I've made myself this amazing sandwich so I'm at the cheese counter looking at the different cheeses and I realize there's three guys staring at me. Now, if you've traveled as much as I travel, you always know that when people stare at you, you're kind of weary. What's going on? You know, and the best thing you can do is if a person is on your right staring at you and you have an option to go to the left and walk away from them, your best bet is to walk straight at them psychological because um, you don't know you're in a new country you don't know what's going on uh, you know so i'm noticing three guys staring at me so i decide all right i'll get my cheese i'm kind of like playing around at the at the cheese counter buying time thinking what the hell am i going to do so i said all right i'm going to walk straight towards them like i own the like i own this store with that kind of confidence so i kind of walk straight towards them and I'm like good morning guys and I walk past them and they go Justin and I'm like what and I turn around they go Justin I'm like yeah he says oh you look so much younger on camera I'm like oh yeah great thanks <laughs> thanks for the wonderful compliment anyway it turns out there were three subscribers that had seen me walking down the street followed me into the supermarket and were wondering how to approach me I walked straight at them said hi and they recognized me. So I went back to the hotel and we, we spoke and we ended up exchanging phone numbers and they said, oh, come with us for a beer. I'm like, listen, mate, I've just arrived. I don't know if I'm up for it, but maybe. Let, let, just message me when you guys know where you are. So I went back to the hotel, had some food with my son. I said, I explained to him what happened. He goes, no way. The guy in the lobby recognized you. Then three guys in the supermarket recognized This is my three first encounters, my two first encounters in Armenia. He's like, this is crazy. What's going on? Now, I'm not used to this. I'm not used to every two minutes someone recognizing me. So we eat. And I said, they've, they've invited me out for a night out. I'm, I'm like, what should I do? He goes, ah, come on. You know, you're always talking about respect and that they invited you, you've got to go. I'm like, yeah, right, fair enough, I'll go. So I messaged them, I said, all right, I'm on my way. So I joined them for a couple of drinks, met the most amazing people, one of which we became really close friends. His name is Suren. He's the one that took me to the reverse gravity hill. You know, you never know what, how things are going to develop. Absolutely phenomenal guy. Anyway, we went out drinking, um, went back to the hotel. Next morning, I'm ready to film. I leave with my son, David. So, all right, here's the plan. We're going to do this. We're going to go there. We're going to record here. And there. I step out of the hotel, literally step out of the hotel. And the first thing I hear is a guy calls, Justin. And I'm like, who is this? And he goes, oh, I'm from California. I'm Armenian. I watch your videos. And I'm like, no way is this happening. That specific day, I had 10 guys recognize me in Yerevan. The crazy thing is, a couple of weeks later, I was in Berlin. Armenians in Berlin recognized me. A um, few videos ago, not so long ago, about two months ago, I released a video in Brussels where a guy, an Armenian in Brussels recognized me. So the point I want to make is that I'm not staying away long, guys, because I absolutely love Armenia and Armenia has been so good to me that um, I can't stay away for too long. So I'll be back there soon. I hope you enjoyed that story. I mean, I, I, things happen behind the scenes that you guys don't see, uh, you know, on on camera. 
that I just thought maybe it'd be interesting for you guys to, to hear this, but that, that's a true story and it was absolutely mad how that happened. And guys, I'm telling you, I've, I've shut all the shutters here. I mean, the clocks have gone forward. Um, I've shut the shutters. It's still daylight outside. What time is it? It's now 8.30. It's my favorite time of year, guys. The days are getting longer. The clothes are getting shorter. And the views are getting impressive all over Riga. So absolutely love it. Any more questions? What was my normal job? Oh, um, okay, so I'd never call it a normal job. Um, my first job was I used to make French fries in a flea market in a, an area of Florida called Hialeah, which was predominantly Cuban, Haitian, uh, and I used to cook French fries during the day. A job I wouldn't recommend to anybody. Um, but very soon after that, I got into investment banking. I was an investment banker in the States, then in Austria, then in London. And after that, I got into the food distribution business. The job doesn't matter. The job really doesn't matter. What really matters is that no matter what job I ever did, I designed it so as that I could travel and earn a living at the same time. And throughout my working career till today that's been the first um the first criteria okay so and uh and then i got into the food distribution business and today i have things in a way whereby uh two years ago i was fortunately in the caviar business last year i was unfortunately in the caviar business you know it's a business that's very cyclical very dependent on how things happen but uh, i can't complain things are good everybody's healthy nobody's hungry i get to travel so life is good and um yeah and now i get to share my travels with you but what you see on camera now guys um, is basically what I've been doing for the last 30 years off camera before YouTube even existed or Google or any of that. And that got me into some weird situations, but that's maybe a discussion for another time. Mm -hmm. What do I think about myself? Am I an alcoholic or a happy drinker? Hmm. Good question. How crazy would it be if I said I was an alcoholic? Who would admit to that? <laughs> That's a loaded question, mate. Um, no, let's put it this way. I have certain rules that... I live by, always have, because um, the way that I live my life, um, especially in Eastern Europe, where I've been in negotiation deals in the 90s with Russians, for instance, not only, not only, we're not picking on them, uh, but one specific scenario stands to mind. I was in London negotiating in the city, and I was in an office, and there was me and two other guys. They were Russian. There was me. And uh, a bottle of vodka comes out. And it opens. And I know one thing. In this part of the world, when the bottle is open, you don't stop till the bottle is empty. And when you have an empty bottle, for instance, or I'm using this as a decoration, but you never place an empty bottle on the table. It's bad luck. You have to place the empty bottle on the floor. There are a lot of traditions and they take their drinking rituals very, very seriously. So when a bottle of vodka is opened, you don't have two shots, close it, put it back in the cupboard and, and see what happens. You know very well that that bottle is going to get drank and there's three of us. And I know what's going on. They just want to give me a few drinks and see if I'm the type of guy they want to do business with problem was was when that bottle emptied and they put it down on the floor 
And then out of the duty-free bag came out the second bottle. And um, that cracked open, and I'm like, oh, shit, I'm in big trouble here. And till today, I don't remember how I got home. Um, but I always had a rule. And till today, I live by that rule. And you can ask anybody that knows me or my friends, uh, whatever. I never, ever, ever drink two days in a row. Full stop. So if I drink today and I'm feeling like death tomorrow, and I have so many friends that will do the hair of the dog, they'll have a beer in the morning and get themselves up again and feeling good, I'll suffer through it, I'll feel like shit, <clears throat> but I know that by 5, 6 o'clock in the evening, I'll be back to normal. And um, yeah, so the truth is that's one way I have of making sure it doesn't get out of hand. Because once it gets out of hand, I know guys, I've got a friend here in Riga, he could drink for 10 days straight. I don't, I, I kid you not, 10 days straight. And serious drinking. We went out partying one time. We came home, 4 o'clock in the morning. He's asleep. I got up in the morning making myself breakfast. I'm like, do you want breakfast? He goes, he slept in my in my living room. He goes, no, 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 I don't. I can't eat in the morning. But he's looking at my, I've got like a bar in, in, the, um, in the dining area. And he's, he's looking at the, the bar, like fantasizing. And I'm like, what do you really want? He goes, oh, can I get 50 grams? I'm like, it's 10 in the morning. What, 50 grams? He goes, no, 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 just give it. I don't want a food. I just want 50 grams. And he'll keep that going for 10 days. I've done that once in my life when I was 24, maybe. I was in Moscow for 10 days, and I spent those 10 days drunk. Uh, but since then, I've had a rule that I never drink two days in a row. That helps me kind of like, be able to break that needle i need to drink and uh yeah i mean honestly speaking i'll drink when i'm going live and so on just to chill the mood and everything else but it's it's not a daily occurrence um and i do regular blood tests every single year i get my blood tests and everything else triglycerides are a little bit up nothing dramatic but everything else is in good working order so to your and my health. But to summarize, am I an alcoholic or a happy drinker? Maybe I'm a happy alcoholic, who knows? Doesn't really matter, so long as I'm happy. Uh, absolutely, my friend. You're absolutely welcome. I negotiated this with Lux Express. So once again, the code is Lux, L-U-X-J-E-E, -E, Justin, Eastern Europe, 30. And I'll give you a 30% discount. Um, and uh, yeah, it's a great service. I mean, there are a few others, but this is by far the best one. I've been using them for about 10 years, maybe even more. I don't know, but fantastic company. Hello, Caesar, mate. Um, when am I coming to Minsk? Mate, why don't you come to Riga first, and then we can sit down, have a couple of drinks, and discuss when I'm coming to Minsk. Um, look, I've got some good, I've got some good, um, what do you call it? Scottish whiskey, which uh, <laughs> I figured would uh, maybe entice you. There's some good whiskeys here in Riga. Um, Make your way over here, mate. We'll discuss it. I've said, I've said it to you in the past. The, the issue is not so much when I'd love to be in Minsk. Um, it's getting the visa. It's, it's a lot of issues. Um, yeah, if it was that easy, I'd just be there tomorrow. You know that, mate. But um, yeah, by the way, I love that Chinese Aston Martin. That looked the bomb. And now, the great thing is, you showed it to us, but you didn't tell us how much it costs. I was wondering the whole time, 
what's that compared to an Aston Martin? What would be the price? The I don't know what the hell it was called. The Aston Martin 007. Basically a James Bond knockoff, but it really looked... The, and if you're wondering what I'm talking about, guys, there's this guy in the channel called Caesar's Channel. He lives in Minsk. Um, he's on Instagram. He... Uh, he does a few reels and, and uh, short messages that I love to follow because it's always interesting to see what a Westerner in my situation feels like and has to say and uh, really respect the guy. So check out his Instagram. Uh, mate, type your Instagram into the, the chat because I'm sure a lot of people are going to wonder what I'm talking about. I don't know it offhand. And um, yeah. Let me know what that... What I want to know, next Next time you message me, mate, is for the price for that Chinese 007 knockoff, um, you know, Aston Martin. Oh, look at that. He actually gave the information here. It's called a Zika. I've never heard of this car. It's a, uh, it's a, basically the back looks just like an Aston Martin. It's an Aston Martin from AliExpress. Um, it's called a Zika 007 and it's 30 grand. And this is an electric car. Um, basically ever since all the sanctions and the whole world going crazy, um, you know they've had to find alternatives to your teslas and your bmws and your so the chinese are, are coming in you know the, the chinese are actually taking over markets and territory um with their chinese brands and i've never heard of a zika car but the first time i heard about it was on your instagram and that's pretty um pretty crazy but absolutely Ty type in your your instagram channel there because i'm sure a lot of people are going to wonder what i'm talking about yeah go on oh am i frozen Okay, so someone's asking if the Latgale flea market is still open. And for those of you who are wondering what that might be, um, a couple of years ago I made a video of a flea market here in Riga called Latgale, which was a phenomenal place. Basically this, this area full of vendors selling everything you could want and everything you wouldn't dream of ever wanting. I mean, anything from an old-fashioned cable for your parallel printer from your 1990s computer to a grenade. Um, that's how crazy this place was. A nice, um, you know, World War II uh, busk of a general to a painting of... Um, Adolf Hitler. I mean, it was just crazy, the shit that was in this market. It was so fascinating. Amazing. Then about a year ago, a year and a half ago, they shut it down. They shut the whole thing down and decided to renovate the whole place, which I was so happy I got to make the video in time, but so disappointed that they decided to take such an iconic place and just shut it down for a, and, and renew it. And then they reopened and I visited it a couple of months ago. It's still there. It's still there. They've supposedly, they've supposedly modernized it. Fuck all has been done, guys. Nothing, nothing. I couldn't see a difference. The only difference is that 90% of the vendors have gone. I don't know what they were playing at. I go there now. You've got a couple of vendors selling the same crap that they used to. Um, but it's just reduced in size from 
a really vibrant market where they would literally shuttle buses of tourists to go there and buy old-fashioned Soviet memorabilia, Nazi memorabilia. I mean, you name it, it was there. Anything that Latvia had an association to, it was there. You could find it. To now, it being a fraction of the size, still an interesting place, definitely make your way there. But if you're going to expect what you saw in the video to be the way it is now, um, you're going to be disappointed. But still worth a visit because you could still find some good deals there and some, some very unique things. But I got completely disappointed, demoralized. Why would they shut a place like that down? Obviously, it wasn't shut down for any other reason than to, I don't know, discourage the vendors because they're all gone. They're all gone. And... I know that every, once a month there's like this flea market thing that goes around in different areas of Riga where they'll set up a flea market once a month, uh, but it's not the same. This was like an abundance of stuff, um, but still worth a visit, I must say. Okay, could I recommend, this This is coming from a guy called Tayo, or a young lady, I don't know, called Tayo. Uh, could I recommend a restaurant in Yerevan to visit? I remember seeing one in your vlogs when you got La Major. That is the one place I would recommend uh, to definitely eat. I mean, first of all, it's super good value. Um, the food there is delicious. The prices are reasonable. Um, there's always demand for a table. I mean, you know, it's just like you've got to stand around maybe 10, 15 minutes, but it's worth the wait. You'll get your table. And it's called Tun, T-U-N, La Major. Uh, it's right in the center of, of Yerevan. Uh, I can't remember if it was right by... Uh, Pushkinskaya and another street, I can't remember which one, but it's right literally in the center of Yerevan and you will not regret it. That is my number one recommendation, hence why it was featured in the, um, in the, uh, in the video. Another place, if you want more of a place to entertain your friends and have fun, is a place just outside of town, also great value, called Palkovnik, which means a colonel in, in Russian. Um, and it's a restaurant that is your typical Ar Armenian experience. You come to a restaurant, it's not a big room with different tables. It's basically a big territory with individual houses where you can sit with your friends really intimately and have a good time. I went there with my son. We had a whole house, just me and him. It felt a bit weird. Um, but prices, food, absolutely ph phenomenal. So I will recommend in Yerevan, that is, because there are many places. But Tun La Major for your day-to-day -day eating. You could eat there twice a day, no problem, right in the center of town. The selection is massive. And the other one is Balkovnik, worth a visit. If you're there with some friends, you want a great night out, some good drinks, some good food, the whole ambiance with your friends, um, you'll have a phenomenal time. Great. So someone said they'd like to see me in Azerbaijan or Turkey. Um, you know what? It would be phenomenal. Um, anybody who knows me, who knows my character, and as you said, I would fit in greatly. I have no doubt that it would be a phenomenal experience. Uh, I've been to Turkey many, many times. 
Um, not as a YouTuber, what people don't understand is, are oh, you coming here, you come in there, you've, have you been there, have you been, you know, to travel as an individual and then to travel as a YouTuber, you kind of got to redo everything all over again. So stay tuned. I'll be in a city near you very, very soon. Okay, so Ra Randall Boatman just subscribed to the channel. I appreciate it, my friend. And saying, could I go to Budapest, Hungary, and do a video or two? So, Egeshegedre, as they say in Hungarian. Um, you know that Hungary was actually my first country in Eastern Europe back in 1996, in the 90s that I actually ventured to. And it was 1996. I was there for a couple of days. I got kidnapped in Hungary. It's a whole different story. And uh, I think a lot of people after that experience would probably go home and say never again. And my reaction was, when's my next trip? And ever since, I've been traveling the region nonstop so Hungary is definitely one of the countries that we're going to be visiting soon. And um, yeah, absolutely love Hungary, Budapest. It's absolutely amazing. And I don't know why this tablet is driving me nuts right now. Um, but yeah, Ege Segedre. Okay, so Nikis Pauls says that he lives in Latvia and he's always wanted a larder. Are there any challenges with owning one? Is it worth it? Okay, so I never wanted a larder growing up, but it became such an iconic car of the Cold War, of the era that I grew up in, that when I was walking around an area called... Um, what the hell is that area called where I got the larder? Um, not Mutsuniki, but anyway, that part of, of Riga. And I saw this larder, I said, oh my God, I have to own this car. Now, larders are cars that are very easy to fix, very simple. Any Soviet mechanic can do it, but they do go wrong. They do go wrong quite a bit. So... From that point of view, it's not super expensive to get them fixed. So yes, uh, finding a larder that is roadworthy is getting harder and harder. So you can find a lot of larders that, um, you know, look good. But when you say, well, can I drive it? And they go, well, you know, we don't have the MOT. We don't have the documents. This was my grandfather's car. Nobody can find it. Basically, it's useless. So finding... A roadworthy larder is getting harder and harder, and it's an investment. It's not just something that you buy um, and, you know, it's just going to be a pain in the ass. Yes, it is a bit of a pain in the ass, but I will estimate that if you remember 20 years ago when, when we traveled in Eastern Europe, more often than not, it would either be a larder, a Volga. I mean, the cars were very different to what they are now. And you just don't see them anymore. Even me, when I drive my 2106 horrible Soviet green larder, um, and I could drive it through the central streets of Riga, everybody's just stopping, looking. So it definitely gets a lot of attention. And uh, yeah, I would say yes, it's worth, it's worth the headache because I believe these cars are going to go up in value. So if you buy one, keep it well keep it in in a garage make sure it's well maintained um because they're they're not just something that are fun to drive but and i mean fun to drive i mean you drive one of those the minute you sit in it 
it just smells like a 1980s car. And if there are any people that remember the 1980s, you'd sit in a car, you'd have that rubber smell, the, the gasoline smell. It was just typical of the 1980s. Uh, and those noises and everything else. So you, you get that experience, um, but they're going up in value. So I would definitely recommend it. But Nikis, you live once. Buy yourself a larder. If nothing else, at least you can say you own the larder. What do you have to lose? Am I drinking Ararat cognac? Of course I am. I don't drink any other cognac. If it was good enough for Winston Churchill, it's good enough for me, mate. Okay, Joel is asking, any plans on Russia or Central Asia? Um, absolutely, definitely we'll be adding Russia, Central Asia to the list of countries. Um, last year I was supposed to do Uzbekistan, then Turkmenistan with a young lady that I met in Georgia. Um, fun young lady. Uh, but it didn't work out, unfortunately. Uh, but absolutely, it's going to happen. Why? I just got a message from none other than Dana. Good evening. Good evening, young lady. Um, I'm happy you got back from work. You managed to catch the end of the live stream. Vodka time. You drink your vodka. I'm on Armenian cognac time. And uh, I hope you're enjoying your evening too, sweetie. Caesar just recommended I open a business in the Baltics for Chinese cars. Uh, I'd make a fortune. Well, mate, message me later. Let's discuss it. I'm always open for good ideas. And that, that just looked the part, that car. i got to admit, I didn't expect. I mean, you don't know what to expect, but that Chinese car just looked, it looked the part. I mean, when you were filming around it and I was like, that really looks like an Aston Martin so yeah let's see so how do I handle my celebrity status now that I'm becoming more and more recognizable you know what I don't know how to handle it, it just I think it was last week, someone, I'm walking down the street and someone goes to me, uh, Justin. And my initial reaction is like, wait, where did we meet? Um, have we met before? The first thing, the last thing that comes to mind, if you like, is that, oh, this person knows me from YouTube. I always assume, because I speak to so many people, that we met before we've had a conversation and i've just can't place in my mind where um but it's happening more and more that i kind of get caught off guard and then they tell me oh no no, no it's youtube and i'm like really so many more people are, are are recognizing me um the point i want to make is that while it's small and still bearable i'm loving it I'm loving it because I take, but I can imagine at some point why people would, you know, maybe get a bit uh, overwhelmed with it. Um, but I think my idea is never to be rude, always respect everybody. It's something that I think is a, a birth given right. 
everybody deserves respect up until the point that they don't but from the status quo everybody deserves respect so right now I think I'm handling it well I think it's going great I'm enjoying it Any interesting cultural outings in Riga recently? Um, you know, I had planned to make a video about Easter because the way it's celebrated in Riga, in Latvia, is very different to... Um, to the way I'm used to, you know, where you get your, your beautiful chocolate Easter egg and everybody's giving you chocolates and you open them up and you've got your Easter egg hunt where you're, you're, you're looking for all these little chocolate Easter eggs and it's all about chocolate, chocolate, chocolate and you might get a Smarties Easter egg and a Flake Easter egg and, you know, your, your Whisper Easter egg and my favorite, the Crunchy Easter egg. These are all english british chocolate brands and then you end up in latvia and there is no chocolate to be found they have real eggs real eggs and you go to someone's house and the whole idea of easter is you get an egg and someone else gets an egg and they've boiled 500 eggs that have been colored and then they've got these games where you smash the egg. So this is your egg. This is someone else's egg. And you kind of like collide your eggs. And whoever broke, whoever's eggs, who, the egg that broke basically is the loser. And you, the loser now has to eat the egg. Truth is, everybody wins, everybody loses. So you end up eating a dozen eggs on Easter. And... I wanted to make a video about this, but it's hard to really be able to go into someone's house and record this without making them feel a bit uncomfortable and whatnot. So it didn't happen this year, but it's very different. It's very cultural. It's very different to what we're used to in England, where it's all about chocolate and more chocolate. And yeah, but I love it. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. so when is the podcast going live the podcast is going live very very soon i just need a a couple more interviews because i would like because of the theme i'm using basically i'm trying to interview solo travelers and the reason being because you can ask them all the same questions and they're all going to give you a different story a different experience a different answer uh, if I ask any solo traveler, so what's the weirdest place you've ever been to? Everybody's going to give you a different answer. What's the scariest encounter you've ever had? They're all going to give you a different answer. So I think it's going to be a very interesting podcast. Um, the thing is that I need like a backlog of videos because there's no point starting a podcast where you launch a, a, a recording once a week and then have a break. So I want to have the six or seven um, podcasts ready. That way it gives me a couple of weeks to find new material, new content. And I think this summer will launch because more and more of my subscribers are actually going to be traveling. And I'll get more of a chance to, to, um, to meet them and record them interview them, interact with them, and bring you some, some additional great material, not just the life of just in Eastern Europe, but what other solo travelers, just like me, are experiencing out there. What are my top three restaurants in Riga? Oh, let's see, there's some, there's some, and some good restaurants. It depends what you're what you're after, okay? If you're after some typical 
Latvian experience, you want to experience the good Latvian food, um, there's a couple of places. I'm not going to limit it to just top three. So you've got your Lido, which is the kind of place where you grab your tray, you walk around, you get your food, and you pay for it and go. And it's kind of like, great, but it's not an experience in the sense that it's nothing special. Um, in my last video, I went to a place called Ala. Now, Ala is a place that I've known for over 10 years. It's an amazing place here in Riga. Um, I was there last week or the week before. I can't remember exactly. I recorded there. And although it's not known as a restaurant per se, um, it's absolutely amazing. The sense that you get a whole full-on cultural experience you get to dance you get to, to taste all the culinary delights and i've got to say their kitchen was amazingly good uh, as a matter of fact one of the typical latvian delicacies which is the the um the rye garlic bread um in ala it is so good and so famous that they actually have their own Instagram page just for the garlic garlic bread. So there's there's Ala, there is uh, Lido, um, another place is Keys to Riga. This is more of a sit down kind of like music in the background, but that's for your Latvian food. If you're thinking more about international food, now I like to experiment a few things. Um, there is a a uh, a chef here, very cool guy. His name is Martin. I can't remember his last name. Um, really nice guy. And I mean that because he owns a really high-end restaurant here called The Three Chefs. Um, he owns a few other chains as well. Uh, one called um, Ramen Riga. Um, but the the three chefs is really a fantastic experience now it's not necessarily latvian food it's a fusion of anything and everything you could imagine but it's super delicious and the way you experience the food there is very unique so three chefs is very good now the other day we were at lunch at an italian place with a friend of mine and we had an amazing lunch some fantastic um oysters for, for starters they were really good fresh oysters and that was in a place called Italissimo which is right in the center it's probably one of the top Italian restaurants here um, so yeah so if you want Italian which is a common restaurant that people usually ask for Italissimo very good uh, what else could I say if you just want a quick bite something really satisfying Khachapuri and there's a place called uh, Khachapuria, Khachapur, anyways, I don't know. It's a Khachapuri place in Agens Counts Market. It's upstairs, it's Georgian. They, all they do is Khachapuri and, um, and uh, Khinkali. That's all they do, the, the Georgian food. And it's absolutely amazing, by far. Check out these places. I mean, I, I like to eat out a lot, so it's um, it's hard to us. But if I had to summarize it, these are the places that I would definitely experience if I was in Riga. So Deadbeat just um, gave us a um, what do you call that? A super chat or super thanks? Super. Super tip of 100 AED. I have no idea what currency is an AED, but either way, thank you, my friend. I highly appreciate it. I'll check what an AED is in just a minute. And actually, let me do it while I'm on the phone. Oh, it's a, it's a DRAM. Very good. Thank you. Shukran, ya habibi. I really, really appreciate it. And Eid Mubarak, if it's coming from a country where it's dirham. Ah, United Arab Emirates. 
شكرا يا حبيبي عيد مبارك Rick and Tatiana are arriving on August 7th. Listen, doesn't matter where I am, on August 7th, I am meeting you in Riga Airport with the Lada and driving you home for sure. There's no way I would miss that date. So lovely to see you guys. Now, if you, you, you understand who these guys are, guys, Rick and Tatiana, um a, a couple wonderful couple she's from latvia he's from the states they met some 25 30 years ago in new york he lives in florida which is my former state and uh, yeah basically they reached out to me last summer we had a fantastic time together we met many many times and you know you, you sometimes you just meet people and you just immediately click with them and that's exactly what happened with rick and tatiana so i've asked them many many times do you know when you're coming back so i'm looking forward to you guys arriving and as a matter of fact three videos ago i was in brussels and i was filming on my birthday and i don't know if you guys remember if you watch all of my videos there was a moment where i was on the phone and i was in the middle of recording a phone call came in i answered it and i got birthday wishes from rick and tatiana that's them so i'm super looking forward to you guys arriving i can't believe it's almost a year the weather's getting good here you can get the hell out of florida you don't have to wait till august you can come now while it's still you know getting too hot in florida it's perfect here but yeah August 7th, I think it was. Anyway, I'm going to put that in my calendar and there will be a Lada limo service waiting for you just in the parking lot outside Terminal E, B, C, whatever it is. I'll be there. Someone just asked me, which Georgian food do I like the most? I would need to do a whole podcast or live stream just about that. I mean, do I start with, all right, you sit down. The first thing you're going to order is a khachapuri. And, you know, that just goes standard because it goes along with just the Georgian lavash, which is the thicker, not the Armenian thin one, but the, then what would I say? First thing I would order would be a satsivi, which is basically, and it has to be the one without the bones. Just give me the chicken breast pieces in the sauce, which is a walnut sauce. It's absolutely amazing. One of the most delicious things I've ever eaten. Then we're talking about the wrapped aubergines or eggplants with the walnut paste and the pomegranate gorgeous then for main course obviously we're going to talk about a side of lobio which is a bean um, stew that is so that i mean i never thought that you, people could just take a bunch of beans and make them taste so nice then obviously we're going to have a bunch of different meats um from lamb, beef, I mean, uh, don't get me going. I had lunch today. What time is it? It's now, what, 9.17 here. I had lunch eight hours ago. Do you know how hungry I am? The podcast started, live stream started with a guy asking me about khachapuri, and now you're asking me about Georgian food. What's wrong with you? Why are you so cruel, guys? But yes, Georgian food, absolutely amazing. So someone just asked, am I British? Born in London, um, 
Then, when I was young, I moved to Florida, um, spent my youth there from about 15 years old. Hence why I've got this kind of like fusion between American British accent. And then I spent um, my 20s, 30s, 40s traveling all over Eastern Europe. So then I had to kind of like morph my language into a way that was easily understandable. So if you're asking that because of the way I speak, well, mate, I could easily speak like a Londoner and I have absolutely no doubt that if you heard me speak with my mum, you'd say, oh yeah, he's, he's English for sure. Um, but the truth is that till today, I speak that way to my mum. Um, but I've just learned to speak this way. So I'm not sure why you're asking that, but I've had this channel now for two and a half years and it's become such a common question that I kind of like get it. Well, Carlo, I'm happy you caught one of my live streams too. I really appreciate it, my friend. Uh, I guess you are Carlo Luigi, Italiano. Dove in Italia? I guess you must be an Italian with that name. Otherwise, unless you like uh, Mario Brothers and Luigi, you must be Italian. Ah, molto bene. Mi piace molto. And hi, Justin. Happy to see you again. Well, I'm happy to see you too, TH. Living in Montreal these days, though. Oh, Montreal. Now, that's a place. I remember I first traveled to Montreal when I was 16 years old. I went to a place called Tedford Mines in Quebec region. So if you speak French, uh, I don't know, it's French with an uh, a French with an accent. Partu français, toi, colis d'asti tabardac. I just love the way they speak French in in Montreal. It's it's surreal. Um, excellent live stream. Thank you, my friend El Tanda. I really appreciate that. Maui, colis d'asti lo. Okay, great. Now, now, now I know this guy is for sure living in Montreal. Modi Caros de Feu. Who are your favorite YouTubers? Okay, who are my favorite YouTubers? Oh, that is a tough question. Um, I'll tell you why it's a tough question. Because I spend a lot of my time working on my YouTube channel, on other things, um, trying to develop these skills that I need for this, for being able to grow Instagram. And now I'm looking at TikTok. Don't even get me started. It's just so overwhelming that I use YouTube more for an educational kind of like platform. Um, there are some good ones, though. There are some very, very good ones. Uh, I watch a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, you know, these long-form podcasts recently because I'm getting into podcasts myself, and everything is a skill. So I'm watching a lot of this uh, Lex. What's the guy's name? Lex Friedman, um, PBD, where they interview people as well. Sorry. Mm. Ah, yeah, and El Tanda, guys, by the way, if anybody is wondering, in our live chat right now is a guy called El Tanda, um, which he has a channel that hits right here. And he knew that because he, I don't know how he got so lucky, but this guy plays with toys every day every day he just plays with toys but not just any toys he plays with the good old-fashioned toys 
that I grew up with. And whenever he puts a video and he sends it to me on Instagram and I watch it, and I'll tell the guy, by the way, if you ever see a comment, or not from me, but from Nevkatel, that's me as well. It's just where my premium is. I have like YouTube this, and then I have my premium, and I'm not always logged into mine. So if you see, that's me, by the way. So, and he'll send me a link to a, a new video, and it'll be the He Man or Skeletor, or he'll review some videos. One recent one was um, The Breakfast Club, you know, which had Simple Minds. Anybody remember Simple Minds from the 1980s? Don't you forget about me. Um, these were amazing bands, amazing times. And this guy just reviews this stuff day in and day out. I think I chose the wrong path on YouTube. This guy's the luckiest man on earth. And he has a beautiful wife who is an amazing artist as well. Tattoo artist, but, and I'm sure that's difficult, but I tell you what, she'll take a scenery from Venice out of a window, a photograph, and she'll make it look even better on canvas. So, um, yeah, absolutely talented family. Check him out. His name is El Tenda's channel uh, on YouTube. Go and subscribe. And uh, by far, yeah, he plays with all the toys. Some of the toys I wish I could have gotten when I was a kid, and I couldn't, and he's playing with them now. So I'll have to come, come over to Chicago and play with your toys one day, mate. So someone's talking about the Latvian digital nomads visa. I don't know much about the visa, but the second part of your question, would I recommend moving to Latvia for one to two years? Absolutely. You will have the time of your life. You will really enjoy it. It's completely different to, if you're coming from the West, it's very, very different and you're really going to have a good time. So yeah, I don't know much about the visa, so I can't advise you there. But from a point of view of being here and, and enjoying your time, definitely. So, uh, Deadbeat asking about tips on learning Russian. Um, absolutely, my friend. So... The first thing I'll say to you is start immersing yourself. Listen to Russian music. It's so easy now. It's so much easier than it was years ago. Um, you can go on YouTube and you can literally immerse yourself into a language without having to travel there. When I decided to learn Russian, it was so much more difficult. I had those cassette tapes, you know, that you had to rewind and play and everything else. So... Um, definitely watch and listen to as much Russian as you can. At first, don't worry about your progress. Just expose yourself. I don't know where you are in terms of your progress in Russian, but I would expose you to the language. Listen to music, watch cartoons, watch movies, watch the news, different things. It really doesn't matter. Just get the rhythm of the language. Get the rhythm of the language. And then um, start learning sentences at a time without translation don't go and translate uh, a sentence um, from let's say and i'm assuming if you are in dubai you're probably arabic speaking so you'll hear something in russian and then you translate it into your arabic to try and make sense no, no that's not the way you learn language forget your language forget every other language just expose yourself, learn the sounds, understand that those collection of sounds create a certain reaction. People uh, react to a collection of sounds. Because once you start translating the language, once you start wondering whether it's easy, difficult, hard, simple, and you compare it to your language, that's how you go into a, a trap that uh, you won't be able to get your way out of. So 
yeah, just expose yourself to the language as much as you can and learn the language in sounds phonetically. Because um, I could give you a dozen examples that would just make your head spin. Um, but nobody wants their head spinning when they're taking on a new language. They just want the next word and the next phrase and the next word. So learn the vocabulary. Don't worry about grammar. Last thing you want to do is worry about grammar. Learn language, vocabulary, vocabulary, sentences. Grammar, nobody needs it. It should be made illegal. So Tommy's asking, where am I going this summer? Now, is it Tommy, my friend, with whom we were supposed to go to Kenya? Um, if it is, let me know. Um, this summer, I am going to focus on the Baltics. I want to do a whole tour of the Baltic Sea. So I want to share with my audience, my people, just what a gem these Baltics are. Um, and they have amazing beaches, white sandy beaches. I mean, on a sunny day, you could confuse it with, with some kind of, you know, Caribbean beach. That's how beautiful it is. The drawback is that you might have two sunny days and three shitty ones. I mean, that's the reality of it. But on the sunny ones, it's really, really worth it. And what I want to do is actually tour all the Baltics from Estonia down to Latvia into Lithuania, maybe go into Kaliningrad, we'll see if I can get a visa, and then go all the way over to Poland and up the Pomer Pomeranian region into Gdansk, Sopot, Gdynia, and uh, just show you the beauty of these beaches. Because a lot of people, when they hear the Baltics, nobody thinks, oh, a sunny beach vacation. But I tell you what, it's amazing. And a fraction of the price of what you would be paying, let's say, in Spain or in Italy or the Caribbean or Florida. I mean, yeah. Okay, so one second. I have uh, Justin's SCB's Balsams Fabrica Riga. So, Justin's, uh, have you been Balsam Factory Riga? Milu Dana. Oh, Milu Dana. Love Dana. Um, so, I haven't been to the Balsams Factory. I've seen the Balsams Factory, which is right the bridge before you get to Domina. There's the factory there on the right. It's a fantastic building. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that, that if you've ever gone to a bar in America and you've ordered a Stoli vodka, um, Stoli being short for Stolichnaya. Stolichnaya vodka for export is produced here in Riga. And I think at one point in time, they had 17 million bottles exported from here around the world, including the United States, which is their biggest market. Um, and one of the products that they make is the Balsam, the Riga Balsam. Uh, I know the building well. I've never been there. But once again, Dana, if you are asking this question because you'd like to take me there for Riga Balsams, then once again, drop me a message. Um, either that or you can remain my live stream fantasy that I'll never meet. Am I coming back to Bulgaria? Anton is asking. Absolutely. You can't keep me away from Bulgaria. Um, I was going to be there in April, but there's a slight change of plans. Um, but I think I will hop over this summer, if nothing else, for one week. I've got to do one week. Uh, I'm thinking of doing Plovdiv. I'm thinking of doing Sofia. Maybe going Sofia, Plovdiv, then Burgas, uh, Sunny Beach, Golden Sands, Varna, 
just a short little trip but where I can squeeze in a lot of content and give you guys a taste of what it's like in Bulgaria in the summer in other parts than Varna. All right, so Harry Dude recommends that if I'm in Latvia, I should go to a place in Jurmala called Kafenica Kurinc, uh, unique Latvian and big portions. Well, it ticks all the boxes for me. So thank you, my friend. I think I'll uh, definitely take note of that, maybe even make a video about it. So thank you. So, Caesar believes that Lithuania is better than Latvia. Lithuania, best in the Baltics. Um, I don't know. I think they're all great. They're all different. They're so different. I mean, it's like, how do you compare? It depends what, what you really um, are after. Um, you know, when I go to Lithuania, I kind of feel like all their Soviet identity is being swept under the rug so quickly. Uh, Khrushchevkas look like they were built yesterday. Uh, when I go to Riga, when I go to Latvia, I can still get that old, you know, historical feel uh, to the city. So I'm not going to dispute that. I mean, everybody has their opinion, but I just think they're both so different that even though because they're in the Baltics doesn't mean they have to be compared and they're just two amazing places. Well, to you, yeah, go on. Sorry, guys, it's just I got logged out and I had to log in back in, and now I have no idea where the hell I am. Yeah, tell me again. So someone's going on a solo trip to Barcelona. Mate, you're going to have an amazing time. Barcelona is one of the most amazing cities I've ever visited. Every time I go there, it's just amazing. Um, from the architecture to the culture to the food experience. I mean, it's just so vast. Um, one thing I could honestly say is that get off the beaten path. I mean, obviously, you're going to have, you know, Las Ramblas and all your obvious places. But if you dare, get off the beaten path, go into the center, go up and down these alleys that are really narrow. And at night, you kind of like, oh, should I walk down there or shouldn't I? If you have the guts to do it, and Spain is a very safe country, you're not going to get into any trouble, you're going to encounter some gems, especially culinary gems. I mean, you could walk down a little place, you end up in this tapas bar that it costs you pennies, and you just have this amazing experience from, you know, octopus on a hot plate to Catalan, which is toast with grated tomato and olive oil i mean it's just if if you like me and you love your food and you love to experience your culinary experiences barcelona is the bomb you're just gonna love it
So, I love Kaunas and Vilnius. I spent two months living in Lithuania last summer. Um, so, listen, I couldn't agree more. Kaunas and Vilnius are amazing places. And I saw when you got off the plane last time from Scotland uh, how fond you were of those places. And they are amazing. And I, I've lived six months in, in, uh, in Vilnius. So i got to agree, these are phenomenal places. However, it's difficult to compare them to one another. They're just so close, so related, yet so different. And then we've got Red's 37 RB. Now, this guy what, is just dying for attention. This is, the, I think, the second or third, third time he's just write, written creep in the comments. I don't know. Do you really need your attention? I thought I'd ignore it the first, the second time. I guess you just, you, maybe, you know, type it again, but put it in all capitals, you know, like you're yelling creep, and then maybe I'll respond. Um, yes, it's me, your friend from Sweden. I will contact you regarding the Africa trip when I know more. Okay, great. So, uh, Tommy here is uh, a guy who contacted me a few months ago, suggested a trip to Africa, and I'm like, yeah, why the hell not? Because, you know, and unfortunately things happen. They didn't happen the way it you know, they do sometimes. Um, but it's still in the works, and I think it will happen sooner or later. Uh, but the nicest guy with the cutest kid ever. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to it, mate. Do I plan on visiting Serbia? As a YouTuber, absolutely. I mean... It's a great place. Uh, love the culture, love the food, love the, the music, uh, love the vibe. Um, please, guys, I'll get there. It's just a matter of time. Uh, sooner, hopefully, rather than later. I just think after I'm done with the Baltics, I'm going to do a Balkans tour. Um, and there's just so much to see right there. There is just so much from from Macedonia, uh, which is home to Alexander the Great or Alexander Makedonsky, as he's known. And the history there is just so vast that I can't wait myself. And I'm, I'm going to do all of the Balkans and zigzag every little corner of it, which I've done in the past, but never as a YouTuber. So stay tuned for that, guys. So Shai is asking, when will I be in Bulgaria next? In May. I was supposed to be there in April. Change of plans. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe May. Maybe June. Uh, stay in touch with me, Shai, on, on Instagram. That's the best place for, for any updates. You can ask me a direct message. I always respond. Um, but, uh, but hey, you messaged me a couple of days ago saying you're going to be in Riga. I'm waiting for you, mate. Okay, Dana is promising me that we will meet. She's saying that I'm so knowledgeable and I read good Latvian. Not so good. I can read it in my head. If you heard me say it, you'd be, you'd be pissing yourself laughing till now. Um, and yeah, we'll go to the Latvian uh, factory and probably crawl out of there. Sounds like a plan, a good plan. So once again... Dana, I know you're busy, but I travel all over the place and I still find time for you. So just message me and let's get this thing wrapped up. 
Wait, did someone really ask me, is cocaine cheap in Riga? What do you, when you say cheap, I mean, is cocaine cheap anywhere? I don't know, is cocaine even a cheap thing? It's not a cheap drug, is it? And were you comparing it to Miami, to, to Peru, to Colombia, to... The further away you are from South America, the more expensive it gets, my, my logical brain would say. So, can't comment on that, but I've never seen cheap cocaine. And if I did, I probably wouldn't fucking want it either. Okay, this is interesting. Mr. Robot, I don't know if you're a male robot or a fetal ro robot. Um, is this true? Just watched a video which stated Latvia has the largest women to men ratio. 100 women to 85 men. Yeah, my first video on the channel was specifically about that topic. And I was out with some mates of mine. And we had a few drinks and... They were Latvians and they started, you know, the usual banter saying how gorgeous the Latvian women are, tick, true, how tall they are, tick, true, tallest in the world. Uh, but then they started saying, ah, we have the most amount of women. For every guy, there's seven women. And I'm like, well, that sounds a bit far-fetched. So my first video ever on YouTube was an investigation walking around the, city, the, the streets of Riga in the winter, asking women specifically if they'd heard about this statistic and what their opinion of it was. Funny video called Seven Women to One Guy. So they said that the statistic was for every guy, there were seven women. And when I made the video, even though I got a barrage of comments saying ah that's bullshit that's not true this is this this is that it's for 90 year olds and over and whatnot simple fact is is that when i walked around the streets and till today if i walk around the streets and i start counting the men to women um there's at least at least two to one there's twice as many women as there are guys on the street in riga on any given day on any given street uh, which is massive. And then they say, yeah, but that's because all the guys are home and the women are out shopping. All right, well, if you want to meet women, go out shopping. You're a guy, go out shopping. While all the guys are sat home, go out shopping. Bottom line is, I don't know where the guys are, whether they're sat at home or not, but on the street, there are many more women than there are men. So, yeah, I think it's true. Uh, okay, great. So a word of encouragement here from, uh, is it Gadsen? Um, telling me that the first video he ever saw of mine was uh, the hockey celebration last year. <laughs> Latvia had an amazing year when it came to sports. I mean, they did phenomenal in, in international hockey. They did great in basketball. Um, but I, it was such a big thing here. The whole city of Riga erupted and I made a video about it and he's saying that he was literally across me at the Freedom Monument when I was recording that. So, uh, so happy you enjoy the content and thanks for the, uh, the encouragement, mate. Booker T, you're absolutely welcome. I want to thank you guys for your support. I give 100% on every video, and I really appreciate it when you guys give me great comments, get on the live streams, and, and you know share these moments with me. So I really appreciate it. 
and then Carlo Carlo Luigi is saying your videos are wonderful and so genuine long may your channel rain and on that note Carlo I want to thank you for that that is just like the best compliment you could have given me because being genuine is what my channel is all about what you see on camera is what you would see off camera and any subscriber who has met me uh, will vouch for that that there's not much difference when you're off camera or on camera so Thank you very much for that. I watch many videos of people doing Eastern culture, but yours seem more informative. Thank you, my friend Booker T. That is a very nice compliment too. I do my best. I've been doing this for many, many years, not on camera, but traveling in the region. So maybe I have a little bit of a, of a um, unfair advantage to other people in the same niche. So, yeah, maybe that's why. And Alice is in the room right now, interacting with everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi to Alice. And I think that's it. We're done with the questions. Well, guys, thank you once again. We've been on here for, is it really almost 10 o'clock? Are we almost three hours into this live stream? I think my battery on my phone's gonna die any second. Well, Thank you so much for spending your evening with me. I really appreciate that. We have 69 likes, 48, four people in the, in the room right now. If any of you forgot to hit the like button, do so now. If any of you are not subscribed, do so. And also we have a Patreon whereby the people who support this channel in the means that they can help the ongoing process, paying for tickets, hotels, buses, food, whatever it is that, you know, we need to keep this content going. I highly appreciate it, but most of all, I, I appreciate your support, your views. Um, that's the longevity of this channel. And let me see, Latvia has a lot more women. Oh, they've deleted it. That's a shame. I would have loved to read that. Um, but anyway, guys, I really appreciate your time together. Until next week, Sunday is a video coming out. Wednesday, Thursday, we'll try and do a live stream again. And until then, guys, remember, enjoy your journey. That's where I need to stop it. Hang on. <laughs>